Welcome to another episode of CVE Deep Dive. Today we're looking into something a little different as these are not your regular vulnerabilities. Today we're going to be talking about Chrome Ad Heavy Bypasses. But what are these Chrome Ad Heavy Bypasses? Well, in order to bypass something, we first need to know what we're trying to bypass. So first things first, what are heavy ad interventions? So the monetization model of the web, it runs off of advertisements. And ads are a big reason why so much content on the web is virtually free. However, there has been a trend of ads becoming more and more obtrusive. Some ads are misusing the resources they receive, they can use a lot of network bandwidth or system resources, and this directly degrades the experience users have on the browser because their battery will go down faster, their mobile data can be used faster than expected, and their browser will be slower. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Ads can be very malicious. Things like mining cryptocurrency and CPU timing attacks they are not science fiction. Now Google wants to put an end to that and in order to achieve that goal they have added a heavy ad intervention system to Chrome. This system it tries to detect ads using an exorbitant amount, an exorbitant amount of resources and it blocks them if it finds that they are using a lot of resources. The user will, they will instead just see the message ad removed uh, so Google blocks these ads by looking at a couple of metrics. First of all, an ad that hasn't been interacted with will be removed if it uses the main thread for more than 60 seconds or uh, the main thread for more than 50 second, 15 seconds in any 30 second window or if the ad uses more than 4 megabytes of network bandwidth. So just a little side note, if you would like to play around with all of this, visit this URL to enable the feature in the newest Chrome versions. Um, but okay, that Chrome wants to implement this, that's amazing news. People hosting websites, they don't need to worry about ads ruining the experience of their users, that's great. Well, what if somebody found a way to bypass this whole protection? That would render it completely useless and it would give attackers a simple way of still using their obstructive or uh, ads without repercussions. Today we're going to take a look at two ways that were found to do this. Both of which were reported and disclosed to SSD Secure Disclosure. So let's take a look at the first one of these and let's start with the proof of concept video. So we see an ad that's containing a pay and we can see a page that's containing an ad and this is a fake ad it was crafted by the researcher specifically to trigger this heavy ad mitigation system and why does this ad trigger it because it contains a lot of characters you see a lot of a characters here and in fact it contains over 10 megabytes of a characters so it should be removed because that's over 4 megabytes, which is the maximum that it's allowed. Okay, however, let's look at this page. Um, what happens when the researcher reloads it? Well, we see a flicker, a millisecond where the ad seems to get removed. And in the console, it even, even logs that the ad was removed. But after that, the ad reappears. Boom. The system was bypassed. What happened here? Well, an issue was found in the way that the intervention system removes an ad. When it finds a heavy one, it will notify the ad frames using the reporting observer API to let advertisers know that their ad was removed. Then, in order to actually remove it, it will navigate the ad frame, so the box of the ad, to the ad intervention page, which shows the message uh, the ad was removed. And this is the flicker that we see. We see it actually removing the ad. However, how did the researcher make us go back to the ad? Well, it's very, very simple. The researcher just wrote a listener that listens to the reporting observer API call, and when it receives that call, when, so when the ad is being redirected or removed, then it just calls history.back, which sends you back to the previous page, so it sends you back to the ad. Um, yeah, so the error page or the ad removal immediately get, gets reversed 
and the bypass is completed. Now, the real deal is a bit more complicated than that, so check out the full advisory for all the information, um, and you can find links to the advisory in the, in the description down below. But now let's take a look at the second way found to perform such a bypass. And in this video, we see that the page can be reloaded without the ad being removed. What happens? Well, the ad, it creates a shared worker. This is a concept in browsers to create web workers that can be accessed by multiple tabs and multiple contexts. Um, so it's a very nice thing that exists. However, the researcher can misuse it because the researcher noticed that when these shared workers, when they create network calls, that the heavy ad detection system doesn't notice that. So what does this proof of concept ad to do? It crea creates a shared worker and it says, hey, go download a bunch of data. So the shared worker does its thing uninterrupted and in the end, the ad can retrieve all of that data without it being detected by Chrome and without the ad being removed. So the ad can download an arbitrary amount of data, whereas usually it should get removed after it has used four megabytes of bandwidth. These were the two bypasses that I wanted to talk about in this video. And these bypasses, they could allow attackers to use the resources of others for monetary gain. Now, these bypasses, they were shown to the Google team by SSD and Google dis didn't accept them as security vulnerabilities. We see their point, but we would also like to argue that these can cause quite a lot of harm. The term security vulnerability has a broad context. In this case, someone can use the resources, the electricity and more from you without you really knowing it. So as a cons consumer, I feel like the vendor, being Google Chrome in this case, it, the vendor could be responsible for ensuring that the system cannot be bypassed and having such resources being used by an attacker is in my opinion an issue. However, this is obviously up for a lot of debate. Um, so I would like to know from you guys in the comments, what do you think of this matter? Um, but anyways, that has brought us to the end of this video. As always, uh, check out the full advisories on the SSD site. Uh, everything is linked down in the description below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back the next episode of CVE Deep Dive. Take care, everybody.